Nick Durant here with Johnny Artist Tattoo Club and today I am working on my machines and tuning them up so I decided this would be a good time to show you guys how I do that. So I'm going to cover how to tune your machines, the difference between a color packer and your liners, how to set those up. So right off the bat, some things that might help you are one of these little interchangeable screwdrivers that have the different tips on them because what you might run into is you're going to use a lot of the same tips for a lot of your screws but then even on the same machine you might have to change out you know you'll get one that's too big for the screw this is a smaller tip and you have to switch it out so you have to switch it out with a smaller one so you'll use two of these for one machine and then some machines have different types of screws so you can get a Phillips head screw on one star head on another and who knows what else so having a little kit here that has everything in it will help you out spring tension gauge will come in handy yes I am going to use the numbers on my machine but once you have everything set up correctly you can use your spring tension gauge to see where it's at now get yourself a tackle box from Walmart and just start throwing all your spare parts in here all your extra contact screws you know hold on to this stuff because you never know when it will come in handy on another machine there's little parts from some of the machines that I've changed the parts out or I've scrapped them keep a little thread locker for those screws that you don't want coming loose keep a little toothpick comes in handy some washers you have your metal washers and then you have your plastic ones and these ones are like a thick paper so you have some washers that you want to conduct electricity and you have washers that you want to prevent electricity from going through them and then you can cut little shims out and things and coins and stuff like that you can keep screws for your coils and then a bunch of springs and armature bars for when you need to switch out a spring there's a back spring I have some springs I cut on my own if you can if you're cutting them out of feeler gauge stock try to leave the numbers on there and if you don't have a number on it just get a marker mark what that is because if that rubs off and you don't have the numbers on there you're going to be guessing what size spring that is and here's a little tool that I use this is a spark plug gapper spark plug gap tool and you can see it has measurements on here for spark plugs for checking the gaps but you can also use that to check the gap on your machine you've heard of nickel and dime and here is our nickel 
There's our dime and a quarter. And the reason why I have the quarter is because the quarter is kind of a in between the nickel and dime measurement. So I don't always get so technical all the time and check the exact measurements because if I just set it up and it's about the right measurement, I can just use these to get it pretty close and then I'm fine with that. So then I have this feeler gauge stock and I have it set up. Here's your dime thickness, here's your nickel, here's your color packer gap that you want. And then I just keep a thin one here for checking the gap on my rear coil. When everything's set up, you should be touching the front coil with your armature bar. And then you should have a real thin gap in the back. So that's what that one's for. Now, Here is a machine I have set up for lining with small needle groups. Small needle groups go through the skin like a hot knife through butter. They have no resistance. They just penetrate into the skin and a lot of times go way too deep. So when you hear to set your liner up with a dime, that would be true for a liner that you're using for small needle groups. So I would take my dime, I'm going to check without touching the spring, see if I have a dime gap between my armature bar and my front coil. And then I'm going to see if I have a dime gap between my contact screw and my front spring. After pushing my thumb down, holding the armature bar on the front core, which I do. So that's going to give me a really short stroke. And I'm going to make sure that I don't give this machine a lot of voltage so that it will only go into the skin a certain distance without having blowouts. You can see I have some other liners where I actually have a nickel air gap and a nickel point gap. Now, people would say a nickel gap is more for a shader. And here's the thing, you can line with a shader, but you can't shade with a liner. So you can set up your liners from a dime up to a nickel and even a little bit more, and you'll be okay. So how this is set up is, for a liner, I can use from this width all the way up to this one, and even the width of my color packer and it will still line. So it 
doesn't have to be dead on a dime or a nickel. You can go the full range as long as you don't go too far or you don't have enough. I want to go under a dime. You don't want to go with too wide of a gap because that makes it really hard to tattoo and it causes a lot of damage. Armature bars, what you want to look out for is that your armature bar nipple lands in the middle of your tube so that when you put a needle on here it will stay in the middle of your tube and you also want your armature bar to at least come to this back part of your rear coil your rear core at least right there you can go further back but you at least want it to stop right there first thing you want to do is get your tool or get a tube and notch out the top of it run it up through your vise and make sure you're set at the correct length now an armature bar will affect your speed more than your front spring will a lighter armature bar will speed up your machine a heavier armature bar will slow it down so color packers run slower heavier armature bar liners run faster so I have a lighter armature bar made out of alloy this is some metals that have been mixed together if you have cores that are alloy, you want your armature bar to be alloy. If you have cores that are steel, you want your armature bar to be steel. So here is a steel armature bar and you can see it's a little bit darker. I cleaned it up a little bit the other day but a steel armature bar typically look a little bit darker than your alloy ones. These tend to be shiny, but you want to check the weight on these and the size of these, the length of them. Because the length has to be long enough to reach the middle of your tube. But you can change the size and the shape and the weight of your armature bar to either speed up your machine or slow it down. The next thing we want to do is plug it into our power supply and see what we're running on our numbers. Now, my numbers for this machine are 50 duty cycle and 110 cycles per second. With a liner with a very short gap, when you run this machine and you look at the tip of your armature bar, you're looking at this little black dot here with a short stroke you should see the armature bar nipple right there and then a ghost image of the armature bar nipple touching it don't know what you're looking at here let me try to point to it for you 
Okay, look at your armature bar nipple. Now, look at it when it's running. You see it here, but you can see because of the your eyes are like playing a trick on you. Your eyes see it in two places. You see it here, but you'll also see it right here. So that, if you have a short stroke, a dime gap, that's what you will see. And that's what you want for a liner for small needle groups. Now if you move on to a, a larger gap, like a nickel size, instead of touching, you'll get They'll be touching, but they'll look more like a figure eight. See, this one will overlap a little bit. This one will be one on top of the other. And then as you move on to a color packer, and you have an even wider gap, you'll have two separate armature bar nipples and a space in between them. But typically you want the armature bar straight across, touching the front coil with a little gap in the rear. So once you have everything else set up, you have your armature bar the correct distance, you want to see where your numbers are at. Right now, I have a duty of 53 and cycles per second is 107. Now, an unloaded machine is going to run differently than one that has the needle on it and everything set up. So, but it is a pain in the butt to set everything up and check your numbers and then take everything off, move everything around, set it back up, check your numbers. So typically I notice that my cycles per second will drop about 20. If I'm shooting for 100, I'll actually unload it, I'll go for 120. So if you set things a little high, you know that when it's loaded, you can adjust it again and fine tune it right where you want it. So remember that unloaded, you're going to get different numbers, they're going to be higher. It's usually pretty easy to adjust your duty cycle just from your contact screw when it's loaded, but the cycles per second will drop once it's loaded.